Introduction When we observe a plant, then we see that every plant has roots, stem and leaves. Plants also have flowers and fruits. We have already discussed characteristics, types, modifications and functions of roots. Now we will study stem. Objectives At the end of this lesson, you will be able to Find out characteristics of stem Study types of stems Identify modifications of reduced stems Find out underground modifications of stems Study sub-aerial modifications of stems Study aerial modifications of stems Study special modifications of stems and understand functions of stems. Stems The stem is the ascending part of the axis bearing branches, leaves, flowers and fruits. Stem is generally green when young and later often become woody and dark brown. A stem is one of two main structural axes of a vascular plant. It develops from the plumule of the embryo of a germinating seed. In most plants, stems are located above the soil surface, but some plants have underground stems as well. The stem is normally divided into nodes and internodes. The nodes hold buds which grow into one or more leaves, inflorescence flowers, cones or other stems, etc. The stem bears buds, which may be terminal or axillary. A young undeveloped shoot with an immature axis having a growing point surrounded by many closely packed tender leaves is called bud. Branching of stem The mode of arrangement of branches on the main axis of stem is known as branching. The two principal types of branching are lateral branching, dichotomous branching. Lateral branching. When the branches arise from the sides of the stem, the branching is called lateral. The mode of branching in which the growing point does not bifurcate. The branches arise from the axillary buds of the nodes. It is of two types. Racemose, Chymose. Racemose. When the stem indefinitely grows by the terminal bud, the lateral branches of the main stem are arranged in an acropetal succession produced successively towards the apex with the older branches towards the base and younger ones towards the apex. As a result of this branching, the plant appears conical or pyramidal in shape. Chymose When the growth of the main stem is definite, the main stem produces lateral branches which grow more vigorously than the main axis. As a result of this branching, the plant spreads out above and becomes more or less dome-shaped. Chymose is of three types. Uniparaschyme, Biparaschyme, Multiparaschyme. Uniparaschyme. A chymose type of branching with only one lateral branch produced at a time. It is known as monocasial or sympodial. It shows two distinct types, namely helicoid and scorpioids. Biparaschyme When two lateral branches develop at a time, the branching is said to be biparous or dicasial. Example, the Thura, Carissa. Multiparaschyme when more than two branches develop at a time, the branching is said to be multiparous or polycasial. Example, Euphobia, Croton born plandianums. Dichotomous branching 
when the terminal bud bifurcates producing two branches in a forked manner the branching is called dichotomous branching it is common among the cryptogams and also in some angiosperms like screwpine pandanus clinogyne dichotoma etc modifications of stem change in form to perform functions other than normal is called modifications on the basis of habitat stem can be modified into three categories underground modification of stem sub aerial modification of stem aerial modification of stem underground modifications of stem the underground stems by being situated below the surface of the soil protect themselves against unfavorable conditions of weather and the attack of animals and serve as storehouses for reserve food and in vegetative propagation their stem nature can be distinguished by the presence of nodes and internodes scale leaves at the nodes axillary buds in the axils of scale leaves and a terminal bud the underground stems are of four types namely rhizome tuber bulb and comb rhizome a rhizome is a thick horizontally growing stem which usually stores food material it has nodes and internodes scale leaves axillary buds adventitious roots and a terminal bud scale leaves enclosing the axillary buds are seen arising from the nodal points of the stem roots develop from the lower surface of the rhizome example ginger turmeric tuber tuber is a swollen end of an underground branch which arises from the axil of a lower leaf which grows horizontally outwards in the soil each tuber is irregular in shape due to the deposition of food materials starch on the surface of each tuber many leaf scars are seen these leaf scars are the impressions of fallen scale leaves each such leaf scar encloses an axillary bud a leaf scar with an axillary bud is called an eye these eyes of potato are capable of producing new plants by vegetative propagation example potato bulb in bulb the stem is reduced and shown by a short disc the lower surface of the stem produces many adventitious roots examples onion garlics in bulbs of onion garlic etc the inner leaves are fleshy while the outer ones are dry this is called as tunicated bulb since the concentric leaf bases form a complete covering or tunic the apical bud of the bulb produces shoot corm a corm is a greatly swollen underground basal portion of an erect stem the swelling is due to the storage of reserve food material it bears scale leaves and axillary buds at the end of the growing season the aerial parts die in favorable conditions usually one axillary bud near the apex develops into a new shoot utilizing the food reserve material in the old corm the new plant produces a new corm at its base the earlier corm shrivels off examples colocasia amorphophallus sub aerial modification of stem in some plants the sub aerial stems are modified for the purpose of vegetative reproduction sub aerial modifications are of the following types runner stolon sucker and offset runner the runner rises from the base of the stem as a lateral branch and runs along the surface of the soil it develops distinct nodes and internodes
At each node, the runner produces roots below and leaves above. In this way, many runners are often produced by the mother plant and they spread out on the ground on all sides. If any accidental injury results in the separation of a runner, the severed parts are capable of leading an independent existence. Examples Oxalis, Fragaria, Centella astatica, Stolon. A stolon has lateral branches called stolons originate from the underground stem. The stolons grow horizontally outwards for a varying distance in the soil. Ultimately, their end, terminal bud, emerges out of the ground and develops into a new plant. A runner, sucker, or any basal branch which produces roots is called a stolon. Example, Colocasia. Sucker. A lateral branch arising close to the ground level, traveling underground for some distance, turning up at its end, and producing a new plant is a sucker. Example, chrysanthemum. Offset. An offset is a short, thick, runner-like branch which produces a new plant at its tip. The offsets grow in all directions from the main stem of the parent plant. If any accidental injury results in the separation of these units, each is capable of leading an independent existence. Example, Pistia, Icornia. Aerial Modification of Stem In some plants, the aerial stem is modified to perform a variety of special functions. Aerial modifications are of the following types. Phyloclade or cladophile, cladode, stem thorns, stem tendrils and bulbil. Phyloclade or cladophile. A phyloclade is a flattened stem of several internodes functioning as a leaf. In Opuntia, the stem is modified into a green flattened structure called phyloclade. On the surface of the phyloclade, clusters of spines are formed. These spines are the modified leaves of the axillary bud. These spines not only check the rate of transpiration, but also protect the plant from herbivores. The phyloclade has distinct nodes and internodes. Example, Opuntia. Cladode. A phyloclade of one or two internode is called a cladode. There are no suitable examples of cladodes because ruscus and asparagus, which are often considered as cladodes, are in reality cladophiles. A cladophile is a flattened leaf-like stem arising in the axils of a minute, bract-like true leaf. Stem thorns. The thorn is a hard, straight and pointed structure. Thorns are small, modified stems. In Bougainvillea and Duranta, the axillary bud is modified into a thorn. In Carissa, the terminal bud is modified into a pair of thorns. The thorn sometimes bears leaves, flowers and fruits as seen in Duranta and pomegranate. The thorns not only check the rate of transpiration, but also protect the plants from herbivore grazing. Examples, Carissa, Duranta, Citrus. Stem tendrils. Tendrils develop as modifications of the stem in certain plants. The terminal bud gives rise to a tendril in Cissus quadrangularis, and the axillary bud becomes modified into a tendril in Posiflora. Bulbil. Bulbil is a special multicellular body essentially meant for reproduction. In a cave, the floral buds are modified into bulbils. These bulbils get detached, come in contact with the soil, 
and develop into new plants. In dice courier, the axillary bud develops into a bulbil. This bulbil detaches from the mother plant and grows up into a new independent one. Primary functions of stems. Stems have following types of functions. Primary or main function. Secondary or accessory functions. Primary or main function of stem, it supports and holds leaves, flowers and fruits. The stem conducts the water and minerals from the roots to leaves, flower and fruits. The leaves are born on stem in such a fashion that they are able to carry on the important function efficiently like receiving sunlight and gaseous exchange. The stem bears flowers and fruits in position to facilitate the processes of pollination and fertilization. Secondary functions of stems Peronation the underground stems as in zingiba, curcuma and dry terrace help the plants to overcome the unfavorable conditions. Storage of food. Food is stored in parenchymata cells and underground stems like solanum tuberosum, colocasia, ginger. As climbers, the stems may be modified into tendrils hooks, thorns, etc. to climb like Passiflora, Bougainvillea and Vitis vinifera. Photosynthesis When stem is modified into phyloclade and cladode like in Opuntia, Asparagus and Ruscus, young leaf-like flattened stems help in photosynthesis. Secondary functions of stems Vegetative Propagation Stem can be used for vegetative propagation as in case of runners like grass, stolons like strawberry, offsets like icornia and underground stems like potato, ginger. Secondary Functions of Stems Protection Against Browsing By developing thorns, Stems protect plants from grazing. Did you know? Woody climbers or twiners are known as liana. Thickened part of aerial stem is known as pseudobulb and it stores water and other reserves in orchards. In banana suckers are known as sword suckers. Summary Let us summarize what we have learned. The shoot system is differentiated into stem, leaves, flowers and fruits. The basic morphological features of stem are presence of nodes and internodes, multicellular hair. The stem is positively phototrophic. The stem also gets modified to perform various functions such as storage of food, vegetative propagation and protection.